Yo, 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 This episode is based on a video from the very famous channel Physics Girl. I have attached the link to the video in the description. You should definitely have a look at the video. It has three experiments. I have chosen the first one as the basis of this question, the electromagnetic can crusher. And the video shows um, the can getting split into two and flying apart. It's very spectacular uh, when they show it in slow motion. So definitely have a look. Alright, so let's have a read of the question. Consider a metal can placed coaxially inside a long solenoid. The metal can can be modeled as a thin cylindrical shell of radius r. The magnetic field due to the solenoid varies with time t s k t where k is a positive constant. So because the magnetic field of the solenoid is varying with time, there will be some induced currents generated inside the metal, metal can. The resistivity of the can is rho and its breaking stress is sigma. Ignore the self-inductance of the can and any currents induced in the flat surfaces of the can. Assume that the magnetic field produced by the induced currents is negligible. And so the question is asking, compute the time at which the can breaks. So the can will break because the stress inside it will reach its breaking point. Now why will stress be generated inside a can? Because there will be some magnetic forces. And magnetic forces will be because there, there are induced currents in the can. So that is the flow of approach that we are going to look at. Let's have a look at the solution. So here I have drawn the solenoid, this black figure is my long solenoid, which will produce a uniform magnetic field, which was given in the question as Kt. Uh, this green cylinder is my can, which I, I can treat it as a thin cylindrical shell. So because magnetic field is varying with time, there will be an induced EMF generated in the can. So let's first calculate that, calculate that induced EMF. Can I simply write induced EMF as because the area is R, so I can write my induced EMF as dB by dt times pi R squared, just the rate of change of flux. Now I need to calculate the resistance in order to get the current. So resistance is rho L by A. So the current is going to flow in this manner. Due to Lenz's law, you can see that ma since magnetic field of the solenoid is increasing uh, in this direction. This, this will be the direction of the magnetic field. Because magnetic field is increasing with time, the current induced in the can will be uh, will tend to oppose this change and therefore the current induced will be in the opposite sense as compared to the solenoid. So the length that the current will travel in the can would be 2 pi r and the cross sectional area would be this thin red shaded figure that I am drawing here. So let's call that area as A. It's not given in the question so we'll hope it gets cancelled out in the end. Alright, so my resistance is going to be rho L by A where L is 2 pi r divided by the cross sectional area A. And now I can simply get the current by dividing E by R and this is what you'll get the current as. Um, here K comes because of the fact that B is given to be Kt so I'll have K times pi r squared as my EMF. Okay, now first half of the solution is done in which we got the current. Now let's calculate the force. Uh, in order to calculate the force, let's consider half the cylinder, which I have drawn here. Now, because the currents are traveling in this manner, if I look at the top view, that will be helpful. The magnetic field lines as viewed from the top are coming towards us uh, as shown in this figure. So uh, hopefully everyone knows this basic formula that in a uniform magnetic field the force on a wire is I L cross B where L is the direct vector from the initial to the final point of the wire. So which in this case would be 2R. So my force and you can see the direction of the force by just taking the cross product would be I into 2R into B has looked at uh, the situation from the top and therefore I will have a magnetic force this way I into 2R into B and this magnetic force you can see it is trying to compress the cylinder inwards. Therefore in order to resist this force 
the other half of the cylinder is going to apply a compressive force back on these red sections. And then compressive force is going to be sigma into A. We are looking at the point where the breaking is just about to occur. So the stress is going to be the breaking stress, which is given in the question as sigma. So the uh, force applied by the other half, which I haven't drawn here, uh, on this half cylinder is going to be sigma times this cross-sectional area here as well as here. And therefore, there will be a net uh, force of 2 sigma A by the other half of the cylinder. And in equilibrium, I'll have I into 2, 1 into B, the magnetic force is balanced out by 2 sigma a and then it's a very simple case of simply substituting magnetic field as kt Let's substitute that here and substitute the current and you'll get time as 2 sigma rho by r square k square so hope you guys have understood the solution that's it for today see you guys good night